Hi, welcome to Oakhaven. It's been a beautiful day. Day like this means uh, no rain in the forecast, so it's a good day for spraying. Uh, we've been spraying things that are low to the ground, either shrubs that uh, um, are just sprouting up or herbaceous stuff. Um, it's it's fall. Where are we? We're in, uh, what, what's the date? October 11th, 17th? <laughs> Okay, somewhere around there. Um, so it's it's kind of late to be spraying. We'll probably have another week that maybe we can be spraying something. Some things are already turning uh, so that we can't spray them. Uh, some things are green and seem to be growing and uh, and uh, will work to be sprayed. So I wanted to kind of run through the process and then walk through the woods a little bit and talk about each thing that we're, we're spraying. Maybe do some identification of some of the weeds that are biggest problems for us. So what I'm mixing up is I'm mixing up a backpack sprayer. Um, this is a five gallon backpack sprayer. Um, I don't like to carry five gallons around, so I'm gonna mix up three gallons of spray. What I have is a um, is a, a Roundup knockoff. This is glyphosate, 41% um, glyphosate concentrate that I'll be mixing up as a 2% um, spray solution. So uh, we'll go through the process of doing that. The sprayer, uh, because any of these, any of these, these formulations have a, a surfactant in them. They tend to bubble a little bit. Um, a surfactant, a surfactant is, is something that will uh, is added to the chemical so that it sheets across the the leaf, so that it uh, is more likely to um, be penetrated into the leaf. So um, all almost everything has a surfactant in it of some sort. Um, a surfactant is kind of like um, uh, uh, soap. You know, soap makes water sheet onto things, and because that because of that, it seems like it, it bubbles a little bit. So what I'm my goal is, I I used to, I used to add all of the chemicals and then bring the water level water up to the level, and I just was fighting foam all the time. So I went decided to um, go by what the the label says, and the label says to fill it up most of the way with water and then add your your chemicals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> okay, so we've got most of the water in there. So I've taken a disposable cup and I have this just for glyphosate, 41%, and I've marked off <clears throat> the levels here that I need for different things. So 185 milliliters makes one gallon of 2%. 370 milliliters makes one gallon of 4%. It's starting to come off a little bit. <clears throat> so what I need to do here is I need to add 185 milliliters twice, or three times for the three gallons. There's to my... 370 level, and there's the my <clears throat> 185 level. I'm a little short of water, so I can take the sprayer and I can rinse out the cup. So this comes with a surfactant already in it. Some things you have to add a surfactant separately, uh, but it doesn't have a any uh, any indicator dye in it. So to be able to see where I've gone, I add this laser blue dye, one ounce per gallon. One ounce per gallon is probably more than I need. Uh, it's a little bit strong, but it, it helps because if I go out tomorrow, then I'll be able to see where I've gone. So I'm going to... Add three ounces of the dye. You can see that dye just is so thick. It really does coat pretty well. And then again, I'm short of water so I can rinse out my cup. <clears throat> okay, and then I will bring the water level up to the three gallon mark. I've gone ahead and marked the three gallon because it's a little hard to see just that white on white. So um, 
I've marked it with a black sharpie so I can see where I'm going. So you can see that there's foam and there's liquid. So the foam is almost all air, but I'll be a little bit short of my line. Okay. Drop the strainer in. Cap it back off. Make sure it's tight. So three gallons at eight and a half gallons or pounds per gallon. We're talking about a little over 25, ga 25 pounds of, of backpack spray. It's enough that I kind of wish that this had a, a, um, a hip belt on it, but it's, uh, it's okay. So on my shoulders, um, then I take the, uh, carefully do the mixing. I really need music to do this. Get it all mixed up. So I've already spent, I've, I've been out twice already today, so I've sprayed six gallons or so. Um, we'll, we'll head out and uh, go see what we can find. I should mention that often when we, when we do these videos, uh, our dog Kimber comes out with us and is interacting with us. Whenever we're spraying, we put Kimber inside. We don't want her to be walking through all of this. We're trying our best to be protected from it. You know, I've, I've got gloves. These are rubberized gloves on the inside. They're mesh on the outside, which is kind of nice. Uh, rather than just wearing rubber gloves, which my hands get really sweaty, this allows my skin to breathe a little bit, but the, the rubber keeps me a little safe. And then obviously the uh, long sleeve shirt uh, and long pants and everything like that and boots. So trying our best, but Kimber's safe and we're feel, we feel good about that. So we're in the woods. This is an area that I sprayed earlier uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what we sprayed here. Uh, but I, as I walk through, I can see things I missed. So we want to talk about what, uh, what we're spraying. So there's a lot of things that we're trying to get rid of here. Um, basically all non-native invasive things. So here we've got some garlic mustard. Can we get in close enough to see that? So this is garlic mustard that uh, sprouted this year and will uh, bolt up next year and produce seed next year. Uh, so uh, this was just a, a little couple of seed, or a couple of leaflets this year, and so we missed it. But we're going to spray that. We don't normally spray much poison ivy. I mean, <laughs> poison ivy. Spray much uh, garlic mustard. We normally are, are pulling that. Okay, if we back up here. This is a burning bush, winged euonymus. So it's shrubby. No petioles to speak of. So we're going to spray that. We're going to do a whole video on burning bush probably tomorrow. So we can see here we have multiflora rose. Multiflora rose recognized by the stipule at the base which is feathery. All the native roses uh, have stipules, but they don't have a feathery stipule. So I'm going to spray that. Okay, here. Here. This is Japanese honeysuckle. Japanese honeysuckle is a vine. It, it's pretty invasive. It's, it's kind of all over the place, so it's really hard to spray. I'm going to also spray some of these uh, multiflora roses again. So you can see that I sprayed some things that I don't want to spray. Here's wild ginger. I obviously sprayed those leaves. We may lose these wild ginger plants. I hate to have that, but at the same time, it, it's kind of like uh, doing surgery on a, a tumor or something like that. You're, you, it's more important to get out the whole tumor than it is to save the, the good tissue. So I want to get rid of everything. If, if I lose some positive plants, there's other uh, plants in the seed bank and in the area that will, that will grow in. So we have cleared out a lot of honeysuckle here, which means we've opened up the forest floor. That's a wonderful thing for all of the natives that live here that will have light and will grow up. But it also provides light for things like 
the multiflora rose. So when we when the the honeysuckle was so dense in here, it suppressed the multiflora rose. We clear out all the honeysuckle, and the multiflora rose goes crazy. So uh, we can't just go in there and manage a little bit and then step away for a few years. We need to go in there and take it seriously and come back and hit these things like the multiflora rose, which this is not in flower anymore here. I mean, not in any in leaf anymore. Um, this is a, a pretty big patch. We're talking about something that I would say is 20 feet around. And I have come in and sprayed it with herbicides. So most of it is dead, uh, but there's still some live canes that are, are fighting for life here. Um, I'll probably cut these off at the base and then treat them with a 20% uh, glyphosate um, as a cut stem uh, treatment later on. So when we talk about stewardship, that's not just a question of going in and creating or, or completing a task and being done with it. Stewardship is an ongoing process. It's management over a long period of time. We need to, to take out the invasives and then watch for the, the new invasives that will be coming in and keep, keep them under control. So this is Japanese stilt grass. Uh, I'm not going to spray that. I'm actually going to just pick that uh, for two reasons. One, it's growing in the stream bed here, and this uh, version of glyphosate is not uh, not cleared for being in a stream. The, the surfactants in it are, are bad for uh, stream life. Now, I say streams, it's a dried creek bed right now. But the other reason I don't want to spray it is that it wouldn't die in time to to for the seeds not to produce. So I'm going to take this and... Uh, just stick it in my pocket and take it home. There's another one over here. So we ran out of battery yesterday, so this is a new day. Um, last night there was a, a frost, so that kind of affects what we're doing as far as spraying. Uh, we don't want to spray if it's below 45 degrees or so. Uh, right now it may be a little bit below 45, but it's warming up through the day. It's going to be sunshiny. The plants should be transpiring and doing things that they need to be doing uh, for the, the um, herbicide to work. Um, herbicide works pretty well going down to cold temperatures, um, but it's slower. Um, but it definitely uh, it won't be taken up by the plant uh, if it's too cold. So as we're walking around, uh, yesterday we sprayed a little bit of uh, burning bush. Uh, so here we have some bigger burning bush. This is actually big enough that you can see why it's also called winged euonymus. You can see on the stems, it has that papery wing. Winged euonymus or burning bush. It, uh, it can be differentiated from the native uh, wahoo that we also have on the property. By it, ha it has really short petioles. Petioles are the, the stems of the leaves. Uh, and then it's got that corky, corky stem. So these are a little bigger than I would normally want to spray, um, but <laughs> it's one of those things. I, I would rather cut it with a brush cutter, but I don't have a brush cutter, I've got a sprayer. So when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So that's what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna actually spray these. So here, um, this plant, it's, I normally figure like a, a pencil thickness is something I'll, I'll cut off with a um, a brush cutter and then treat as a cut stem with a 50% solution, or actually a 20% um, glyphosate solution. So when I'm spraying something like this that's a little taller, I try to spray straight down on it so that any of the overspray goes directly below it. Here is a bunch of little uh, burning bush. It tends to do that. Here's another one. Here's a much taller one. Again, I'm going to spray down on top of it. There's hardly any leaves on here. We are probably past time when that's going to be effective, but we'll give it a try. Over here, we've got a, a group of it. It looks like it's uh, the leaves are healthy and green, and um, that should be, be pretty good. Over here, we have uh, Japanese bittersweet. Japanese bittersweet has kind of this almost accumulate uh, a pointed leaf here. So uh, we don't really want that around. You can tell it's a vine. It's growing up trying to find something. And then, of course, we've got multiflora rose still to deal with. Okay, let's move on and see what else we can find. 
So we're in a lowland area right now. This area used to be just packed full of honeysuckle. You couldn't walk through it. Uh, so in past years, we've cut that out. There's still a lot of uh, brush on the ground, um, but we've, we've cut out all of the big stuff. We still occasionally have honeysuckle that, that sprouts up. So if you scroll over here, here we have some small honeysuckle sprouts. This is Ammer honeysuckle. Ammer honeysuckle is recognized because it's got these uh, acuminate tips. The leaves have these acuminate tips. Acuminate means that it comes to a, a point, an acute point. Uh, it almost looks as though it was made out of clay and someone pulled the tip out a little bit. So that's acuminate. A number of things have, are described as having acuminate tips. So this is just a little uh, seedling. So we're going to spray those. And then up here, there's a whole bunch more burning bush that we're going to knock out. Burning bush, I used to think that honeysuckle was so hard to deal with. Honeysuckle, in the long run, is one of the easiest things to deal with, I think. Um, you, you constantly have new stuff coming in, new seeds coming in, uh, replanting the area but it's relatively easy to get rid of. But burning bush seems to do this, which just scares me to death. It, um, I, I tend to think of this as going to ground, because it's all like root sprouts. It's just a mass. It is a solid mass of burning bush. You can see it's starting to turn color here. This has gotten to the point where I can't really even spray this. So we're sitting here fighting this, this honeysuckle graveyard. Here we have autumn olive, which is another thing that was pretty prevalent in here that we've taken out all of the big ones. So we still have some younger ones. This is probably just one year's worth of, of sprout here. Um, autumn olive has these stems that have the kind of uh, reddish spots to it. Uh, and the underside of the leaf is really white. It's very noticeable. Um, it doesn't look like anything else. Autumn olive tends to be taller, so again, when I'm spraying it, I try to get on top of it and spray directly down on top of it. So thanks for coming along. We've covered a lot of ground on this video, uh, both literally and figuratively. We've uh, seen a lot of different plants, hopefully in a way that's that's useful to you. Uh, it, it's it's hard to make that transition between seeing things that are just a few leaves on the ground and what the mature plant looks like in flower, um, so it makes it hard to control. Hopefully we've, we've kind of bridged that gap a little bit and uh, we've all learned something about what it looks like at this stage when we can, we can treat it with uh, herbicide. I realize there's a lot of controversy over using herbicides. I'm open to conversation if somebody wants to, to talk with me about that in the, in the comments section. If you've got other things you're talking about, if you're using these uh, these ideas, if you're managing property and you have things that work or don't work, please talk about them in, in the uh, the comments section. I'd like to have this uh, this community um, having a, an option an opportunity to uh, uh, to share share ideas. Um, we can always appreciate we always appreciate new subscribers. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, other than that, thanks for coming along.